Oregon Community College, and I'm working for the Fort Valley Foundation as a grant. And that grant is aimed at um, increasing the number of rural Oregonians that go to school for college and complete college. Um, particularly, the grant I'm working on is focused on um, the success of young men. But if you were to come talk to me, I would absolutely get you help to you know, get you into college. So don't, please don't take that as all of us kind of you care about. <coughs> so my presentation today has two parts. Uh, and mostly it's about thinking about thinking. So first, the first context that I want to create is that the all computers did a study and over five years ago. And they anticipated that by 2030, 85% of the jobs that exist in technology haven't even been invented yet. So the question in, in part there is how do I prepare for that? How do I get ready for a future that hasn't even been invented yet? We've all heard of virtual technology, artificial intelligence. You know, those are all places where, where the work is going on. And you could work, uh, but those jobs haven't been invented yet. So. On the other end of that, in many jobs that we take for granted now, the um, automation, automation, what is automation? Um, automation is doing something without having to do it yourself. Without, without necessarily involving people. So we've got artificial intelligence, we've got robotics, we've got CDC milling, we've got um, 3D printing, all of this will work can be done without necessarily hiring a person. So the prediction is that by 2030, 30% of the jobs that we take for granted are going to go away. So that's why I'm here to talk about how do you prepare for a future that's so uncertain, so uncertain. Um, the, first, the first piece that I like to talk about, and, and this, is, this is a little ironic, maybe, is life planning. And you're going to say, how do I plan my life when the future is so uncertain? And what I like to think about with life planning, as opposed to, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that, and my life plays out from me in a sequence, is instead you think about yourself um, from the inside out. And you think about what are the core values that motivate me, and move me, and fulfill me. So for me, um, adventure, curiosity, Independence. Those are kind of the core values that are, that are important to you. And I would encourage you, it's easy to go online and find lists of core values. Just move through them. Figure out where you resonate. Figure out what, what moves you and connects you. Then I like to think about in, in that core, there are a set of skills that um, will propel you into success. Without my slide, I'm not going to get all five of them. But the number one, Number one is grit. Came across my LinkedIn feed today, this TED Talk, where this researcher did research with West Point uh, Academy students, did it research at a uh, selling bee, and then did research with uh, high power sales people to determine who's going to be successful in their careers, who's going to stick to it. And the single predictor of success was grit. So if, if that's the only thing I can convey today, because I'm missing the other ones, is grit will make a difference for you. Perseverance. Um, so those are kind of in the core. And around it, I like to visualize a, a wheel, a circle. Four parts of that. Mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Okay. Those roughly make up your intra-person, your interior person. Um, and what I like to say about those is, what are your strengths in those areas? Build on your strengths. Identify, you know, when I'm thinking, when I'm solving problems, uh, this is my strength. Maybe it's, maybe it's when you're actually taking something apart and tinkering with it. That's a strength of yours in your mental cognition. Or, you know, you feel things deeply. And, and you empathize well with other people. You see their suffering. 
Hey, what are your strengths? Play your strengths in those four areas. Now, I'm going to keep this moving forward. If one of those areas gets neglected, you're going to have a flat tire. If two of them get neglected, you're going to have a flat tire. And it's hard to get through life driving on a flat tire. So I'm, I'm hoping that by identifying this, we can start to think about the plan. How am I going to feed myself in these four areas? Do you have a question? Uh, the question is in no, it's not. <laughs> um, it's a, it, is, it, is it something you want us to ask? Uh, I wanted to ask your opinion on the spiritual part because for some people it's subjective. I, I think that uh, spirituality may include religion. Like being a pastor or something like that? Um, or, or simply attending a church mm -hmm. or a synagogue or um, you know, some form of religion may be part of your spirituality. For me, that's not, that doesn't feed me. But when I'm out in my canoe, trekking in, in the woods, with a canoe on a river, that's where I feel felt, you know, feel filled up with my connection to the universe. So that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's all right. Um, around that wheel, we have... I should have catched it. I should have gone over this. <laughs> around that wheel, we have... Skills that connect us with other people. And you notice I'm talking about skills, I'm not talking about talents. Talents are things you're born with. And you can certainly grow your talents. But skills are something that everybody can practice and develop. Teamwork. You guys do uh, group projects here? Do you work together in groups? No? All by your ones? Sometimes? So teamwork, collaboration, and communication are the ways that you connect with the world around us and the people around us. And then, um, around that, I, I think about the significant relationships that we have. How many people um, want to stay here in, in this area for your adult life? Everybody wants to move away? Okay, well that's, that's fine. That's your connection to place, okay? Connection to a lifetime partner, um, friends, your career. Those are all relationships that you can practice these skills with. Okay, so that's that's my idea when I say planning life planning. It's not necessarily what's the sequence I'm going to do things, but how am I going to take care of myself so that I can keep going in this uncertain world? That's that's the first section. Life planning. Questions. Okay. Can you just go to the next slide, just put the arrow. Okay, here. Oh. On the mouse, just put the mouse. On the mouse. Get my glasses on now, so I'm actually seeing. Okay, so that was a slide where we talked about the 35% of the jobs going away. This is a life plan. That's my map. Grid, initiative, flexibility, and productivity. Those are the points I was trying to make. Money, impact, and expression. Okay. It's kind of a rude question to ask somebody. How much money do you make? Right? That's, that's not a cool thing. But the question is, is, is that the only thing you make? The only thing you make is money? And I think that's not true to have a fulfilling life. You're going, to, you're going to be interested in balancing these three things. Money, what's impact? Impact might be, hey, I want to be on the city council. I want to be involved in government. Or I want to work for a, a nonprofit that takes care of ocean plastic cleanup. It, it aligns with your values. And it's a, a, a kind of currency, expression, Anybody play instruments? Like the guitars? Write poetry? Short stories? Paint? Cool. So that's what the expression is talking about. Throughout life, these, these three slider bars, everybody familiar with the slider bars on a mixer board are? You've seen those in, in recording studios? They mix all the, the sound. In this case, we've only got three, but you can't max them all out at the same time. 
So the question is, if at the start of my life, is money the thing that's gonna motivate me? Is impact the thing? And then you know, as you go through your life, you're adjusting these slider bars to fit your, your experience, your moment. Again, this is life planning that isn't sequential. It's, it's instead based on values. Okay, averages for Americans. Move house 11 times, I've moved 17 times. 12 jobs over working lifespan, I've got 16 in my resume. Two career changes, I, I fit into that category, I'm not above the average on that, but many of my colleagues argue with me and they say, oh no, it's closer to three or four career changes. And what that means by a career change is a total retooling of skills. So every four to eight years, you're talking about retooling, retooling. So whatever you came out of, out of high school with, whether it's the cosmetology, some of the construction stuff, some of the, the driving simulators, in, in about eight years, you're gonna have to think about, okay, what's next? What's the, what's the retool? What, what, what am I gonna learn now to, to carry on? Uh, Another thing is that 70% of employees are disengaged from their jobs. That's a motivation to move on and to learn something new and to, and to be creative. Uh, don't get stuck there. Uh, and then the last one, another way of saying this is that uh, a person with a four-year degree is likely to make twenty-five to $27,000 more per year than a person with only a high school diploma and they're more likely to be uh, less frequently unemployed. That was an awkward way of saying that, but they're more likely to stay employed. So these are, oops, I'm going backwards. Okay, and then the next section that I want to talk about, you're all engaged in this right now. You're engaged in learning, you're in school, you're, you're, you're doing the learning stuff, right? The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and unlearn. You can see the logic here, and I'm talking about a future that's so uncertain with, with jobs. I'm talking about an average lifespan changing careers every eight years. You know, the ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn is going to be the important skill. I like to think about lifetime learning, both lifelong. So again, how are you gonna get through your career? How are you gonna get through your, your parenting, your marriage? How are you gonna get through those things in terms of lifelong learning? And then life-wide. Most of your experience up until now with learning has been in school, but that's not all of it. And that's something that I wanna explore now, is what other sources of learning are available to you? College, military, work, volunteering, mentor relationships, job shadowing, internships, interviewing and networking, travel, living abroad, parenting, gap year, reading, Toastmasters, museums, theaters, free online resources. Anybody ever watch a YouTube video on how to do something? Man, that is so cool. Way too many times. When I, when I was a kid, that did not exist. And, you know, now I'm on there all the time learning stuff. Uh, tinkering, you're messing around in the garage, you're messing around in the shop. My point in identifying these is that there's a whole bunch of different ways to, to get learning into your life. It's not just about school, it's not just about work. And I, I said this earlier to a young person, but what I like to do is think about how can I integrate college and military, and mentor relationships, so that I'm doing three things at once. Getting a lot more bang for my buck from home than I'm, than I'm here. So you can, you can start here. Maybe your senior year you go over to SWAP and you get involved in the welding program. And then you say, all right, I'm ready to join. I'm gonna do it in the uh, Air National Guard. They're gonna teach me how to do diesel mechanics. And so you've got two things going on at once. Probably you're going, to, you're going to have mentor relationships with grandparents, parents, community members. All this stuff gets going and your learning accelerates. So that's the point of that. And then the 
final section that I kind of want to talk about is uh, decision making, because obviously all of this involves decision making. All of this is about figuring it out, making choices. I am not a product of my circumstances. I am a product of my decisions. Stephen Cutler. After this is just a list of adulting kinds of decisions that will will face you, or you will face. Um, buy a home or not. Move to a new state or not. You all said you wanted to, to move on from this area. That's going to be part of your decision model. How are you going to make that decision so that it's the best decision you can make? I don't know if we'll be able to do the video. The last video didn't play, right? Okay. I can do it. I can represent the video. There are um, several approaches to decision making that I'd like to introduce. One is if it's simple. I'm going to have chicken or fish. Flip a coin. Don't spend your decision calories on it. Through your friends that you have. They'll say, I'm having the fish. You'll say, great, I'll have the chicken. We can, we can see how they how they taste. Okay. Okay. Don't waste your calories on those easy, simple decisions. You know, you go to Amazon and there's 12,000 kinds of white shoelaces. Oh. White shoelaces, just buy it. You know, you don't. The next level is decisions that are um, more impactful, but still not going to be a problem in two to three weeks that you may forget about in two to three weeks. Or they're reversible. So like, I'm going I'm to write this error and me, and then you say, oh, gee, that isn't going to work out. Well, I can get a refund. I can get my money back. I can change my mind and go do something else. Um, one example of that kind of level of decision is that in the past I've been responsible for uh, hosting uh, retreats in workplaces. And so sometimes we'll have two, two bids on the table from a, from a facility who wants to host us. So, you know, we, we're going to make a decision and everybody's going to have an experience, but after a couple of weeks, nobody's going to remember. So what I might do is turn to, the, turn to a colleague and say, which do you prefer? I'm outsourcing. I'm not spending my decision calories on a decision like that. So then we get to the easy decision. Well, the ones that I had before. The life decisions. Do I go to college? Do I join the military? Do I buy a house? <clears throat> and so one way to think about those is instead of pros and cons, think about risk and benefits. So for example, if you decide, well, okay. I'll go, to, I'll go to SWAT for a couple of years, and then maybe transfer to a big university. So that decision has um, a cost-benefit ratio that's in your favor, because you know exactly how much it's going to cost. There's no surprises there. But you don't know how big of a change. If you went into nursing, for example, you do our nursing program, you're looking at a, at a known fixed cost and you're looking at earning potentials of $60,000 or more a year. That's very you go. You know your cost benefit ratio. Um, the other thing that I would, I would encourage you to do is to check with um, your body. Check in with your body. Check your brain. Your, your gears grinding over this decision. Does something not make sense? Does it go away? Check your heart. Check your heart, see where that's at. If you don't have a full body agreement, check your gut. If you don't have a full body agreement, it's no right now. It may change in the future, but it's no right now. You've got to be true to that um, mystic. And then there's a final component to this decision making that's oftentimes people get sloppy. They use intuition to rationalize what they want, as opposed to using intuition to be a tiebreaker. So with the intuition, oh, I, I want to, I want a Subaru BRZ. My intuition is telling me to get a Subaru BRZ. But that's just kind of ridiculous, you know. And it's what you want to do. <laughs> you don't have to justify it. Okay. Um, I think that's, I think that's everything.
Huh. Frozen. That's what my presentation is. Do you have questions, concerns, um, anything you're interested in knowing about the Southwest Oregon Community College, how that might fit into your educational future? Yeah. So you said at the beginning of your presentation that um, the world is, there's like 85% of technology hasn't even been like, invented yet. The jobs that will support that technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how is Southwestern, like, are they like planning ahead or like, how are we, I don't know how the world is around you, but. You're doing fine, I think I understand what you're saying. You're asking us where are they positioned to help me in that future. Yes. Uh, we do have uh, an AAOT, which is a, a transfer degree, that is a computer science transfer degree. We also have digital design programs, um, so those can inform animation, uh, YouTube content, they can uh, inform web, web creation and design. Uh, and usually that fits into kind of a marketing realm, but the technology, the use of the technology, is going to be foundation for, for those things that exist in the future. You know, as we start moving, I did a project for my last degree that was uh, augmented reality. And so I was trying to get uh, a space on the, the building, the, the university I was working at, to trigger some additional information. So you, you would hold your phone up, you would scan whatever it is, and it would, it would give you more information about the history of the building or about you know, what kind of classes you can. But it became interactive. That was the tour I was trying to create. So that technology is, is better now than it was when I was trying to do that. But that's an example of, you know, you could be a tour guy doing, doing a technology, or doing a tour in um, Amsterdam setting up on historic buildings and providing this content information for people. Any other questions? All right. How are we doing for time? Doing all right? Okay. Thank you very much for listening to me. I appreciate it. Um, and I'm going to be out in the hallway. Thanks. I'll be out in the hallway. <laughs>